Alright, I know you got the inside knowledge. Put the release date in the bag. Tell me all of the things that I need to know about the release date of the next patch, Ratnus. Well, there, dude, there's speculation because... Um... Okay, there's a few different ways of speculating about this. One of them is the Timeways event <laughs> had some uh, dates attached with it. The other, though, that was more recent, actually, I'm not sure if you saw this, was that they put... So there was Trader's Tender uh, data mined as being in a package with the potentially 11.0 yeah, release. Yeah, yeah, release. But that went into the 10.1.7 PTR build, which you would assume if the announcement of 11.0 was after 10.2 then that would go in the 10.2 build rather than a 10.1.7 build so there might be there might be evidence there that the patch or that 11.0 will be announced before 10.0 is released and everybody's thinking 11.0 will be announced at blizzcon so maybe that's some more 10 when, when's, when's blizzcon like uh november 1st november or yeah first or second or something yeah okay Okay, I uh, we I start the video with the troll introduction, and somehow I got. Uh, actually... Dude, I've got I. You don't see, I, but over in another room, I've got I've got a board full of uh, you know push push pins and. You see and the whiteboard in the back. You see the whiteboard yeah. in the background. I see faint drawings. I've been recently. Yeah, erased. yeah, I've been I've been cooking. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that. Yeah. I mean, okay. So what we're doing today, we're talking about like a Tim Two wish list. I think we're gonna go through a couple of other things, like when is the PTR speculatively? When is the Patch release, which Stratnos seems to believe is right after I, BlizzCon, which makes my the most guess sense. is patch the week after BlizzCon and raid the week after that. Yeah, that's my that's my official guess right now. So we're gonna have like what Thanksgiving raid, American Thanksgiving raid. Yeah, the raid would go over Thanksgiving, except maybe the race would finish just before it. But yeah. Um. Then we're gonna talk about uh, some of our just like general PVE wish lists, whether it be Mythic Plus raid, you know, gearing. I think we're going to talk about professions a little bit. I have, I have something to talk about with professions um, and then kind of like anything else. We do wish lists once a season, something like that. Kind yeah. of talk about some of the things that we are looking forward to in the next patch. Some of the things that um, we think might need to be changed moving into the future. That kind of thing. So uh, PTR. When is the PTR? I think is something that is going to be questioned not only just for temp or not just for 10.1.7, but when is the 10.2 PTR? I have expectations that the 10.2 PTR is probably soon. Like, I could even see it being announced as recent as, like, this week even, with, like, ray testing and some of the more 10.2-centric stuff starting, uh, with maybe even a date for 10.2. So that's the thing, right, is, like, we don't know the name of the patch, we don't know the theme of the patch, we don't know anything about the patch. That will come out before the PTR does. We yes. won't learn what the patch is about by testing it on the PTR, but it won't be... Historically, it hasn't been much before, so uh, there's a reasonably good chance that we will learn about what 10.2 is on, like, a Tuesday or a Wednesday from some blue post, and then, like, 24 to 48 hours later, there will be a PTR up, and there will be raid testing, uh, you know, two to nine days after that was when it'll start or something. That's I think that's how it went last cycle. Uh, what they also do sometimes is they'll like uh, depend depending on the preparation for the patch itself, they'll like jam like a YouTube video, like a big Q and A YouTube video. Yeah, uh, there was one one of those for like Zareth Mortis and stuff like that. I think it kind of depends on where they are in their development cycle, where they are with like the patch itself. I I could see it be something as eccentric so as a video, maybe something as loose as like a blue post though. Now ten point one point seven is uh, September fifth, I believe. E um, yes, yes, that's what we have right here on screen. I think there's a good chance that that week is when we get the ten point two announcement and when we get the ten point two PTR, which like is seven eight something like that. Okay, so it's like from now. yeah, we can uh, we can half or so. Yeah, but again, you know the. Could be could be as early like you said as this week. Could be a month from now. Who's it, a lot mm. of that's going to depend on what their planned release date is, are which you, is still completely up in the air. Are you getting worried about the PTR testing cycle? Um, typ typically for like this is more aimed at raid and mythic plus stuff. Um, they've been doing a bit longer of PTR cycles, but like sometimes you have like a random short one. I think that like yeah, Abris was a pretty short cycle. Yeah, was, there was a lot of concern like, oh no, is this even going to be ready? Mm hmm. Um, oh my god, I forgot about that. I forgot about all that com communication. Yeah. That players were like, this is not going to be ready. Yeah, you know, delay the patch, delay the patch, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that they they have the capacity to test, like, more bosses per week than they do usually. So, if, mm -hmm. 
you know, if they have less time, that's what they'll do, right? They'll do three bosses a day instead of two and yeah. we'll get through all the bosses. We don't know how many bosses are in the next raid as well. It could be another eight boss raid, which uh, would be easier for number of testing to do, especially because they don't even test the last <laughs> boss anymore. Okay, another thing for PTR testing. I know that they did this with beta where they only had Mythic Plus be very specific uh, weekends um, for specific dungeons for beta, uh, for testing uh the keys it made sense with a longer cycle for beta they stated that they didn't want people to get too optimized the dungeons that should not be the case for mid expansion dungeon testing because there is not that many people testing the dungeons anyways and only having it available on the weekends makes it a lot harder to get a lot of data for the keys only the most hardcore people are testing ptr dungeons and mythic plus anyways and it's one of these situations that like mid expansion not a lot of people even do it and so like uh Isolating it only to very specific weekends or only the weekends in general makes it harder to get data for, from these people that are trying to do the dungeons. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what all their reasons are for doing the test like that. I think it's they, they like doing like get some data, iterate on it, you know, do another discrete testing phase get some more data, iterate on it. Yeah. Rather than in some, I think there's a decent chance that if they just left it up always that there's like two worrying two things they'd be worried about happening one is like they wouldn't want people to feel like oh there's no point in playing the current season on live i can just do ptr keys instead whenever because like they only do a I couple know, keys, keys also have kind of have kind of taken that over especially if the season feels dead which this season has that vibe for a lot of people uh because of the way the balancing worked out <laughs> that's so true yeah okay that's i think one concern and then the other concern is like if it's always up are they actually? Are people actually going to come in and test when they make the next round of changes versus if they do a dungeon weekend and they're like, okay, we've made some changes, come back in and test. Uh, maybe that will get them more data. I don't. Those are basically two opposite effects that might be what they're worried about. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. I agree. Like, especially if you're somebody who can only play on certain days and the dungeons yeah. are just never up on those days. That sucks. Yeah. I don't know. I, I do think that they also run into an issue sometimes where people play a lot of dungeons without affixes and without. To, uh, yeah the no affix key like you log into yeah. beta or whatever it's like we're gonna do a fortified tyrannical key and that's like very much the standard or you know you do fortified tyrannical you put like one other affix like volcanic entangling you know yeah put easy affixes on it you yeah. extrapolate later and you're like oh, i'll figure this out as yeah. i as i do it in life um but yeah i think that those are some of the changes that could probably make to the ptr i think overall though like you know ptrs are pretty standard i think with i think their process for ptrs is normally pretty good yeah i mean it's it's one of those things that's like very hard yeah. to criticize because it's hard to know when something is bad or good in the live game whether more testing would have helped okay right like is is that the variable we actually need to change here let's get down to business let's talk about our real wish list items do you want to start with mythic plus or raid first sure let's do mythic plus because we're on uh we, i guess we talked about this a little bit in a few recent places but dungeon selection okay season three um, I think I, so obviously we know Dawn of the Infinite is going to be in there. So that's two out of eight. Yeah. We've got six others to fill. You speculated, for uh, some of the season one dungeons to come back, you know, like Algathar maybe, and maybe one other one, and then do some cool legacy dungeons. Mm -hmm. yeah, you kind of speculated on our podcast yesterday that you thought that with like the, the theme of like 1017 that you thought it might be like ever blooming, like, uh, so Dark Heart Thicket? Yeah, because 10.1.7 is Emerald Dream themed, I figured those two dungeons kind of are on theme. That being said, we don't know if 10.2 is Emerald Dream themed or if it's going to take a, you know, there could easily be a swerve, in which case sure. the theme would change. Um, um, that, like Nelth Slayer was sort of in this season on, I think, on theme uh, for 10.1, so I, I assume they'll do similar things in 10.2. Yeah, I think other cool, maybe like dungeons um, for my wish list. I, th I think that they d generally do better with like open concept dungeons. So I think like maybe like Waycrest Manor and Ivashara would be kind of cool. Yeah, selections Ivashara for me. is uh, yeah. a I, I, often favorite one. How do you how do you feel about um, legacy dungeons in general? I guess I think they've been working out pretty well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it sort of depends on the dungeon. I think it's clear that they definitely need to do a lot of like depending on how old the dungeon is, especially rework to them. Uh, yeah. And the ones they've, when that rework takes the form of like just adding more mobs, it's that generally bad. But when it takes the form of like redesigning abilities and modernizing things, I think it's been generally pretty good. So you can look at like Jade Serpent as a place where they basically just added a bunch of mobs. And that I think did not end up being a particularly good dungeon, but there are a lot of other dungeons where they, you know, like they look at freehold first boss, freehold second boss, 
uh, basically being modernized and being turned from like one shot line of sight bosses to yeah. being real bosses that you know do sustain damage but livable and freehold first phase of first boss is still an issue but uh the second phase shot used to one shot captain eudora used to one shot if you were a cloppy like all those things uh, yeah got nice and fixed um okay you want to talk even you blood swarmers and under rot so yeah i think that's that's the big takeaway is like they're almost every old dungeon can work but they need uh need some dev time yeah it needs, to pick. i mean it needs certain level of dev time i think that yeah uh, temple j serpent and vortex pentacle were both close and they were the oldest dungeons, but then they ended up, I think, both having slightly different problems, but problems nonetheless. Uh, yeah. You want to tackle affixes, and then I'll, I'll hit a point of a part of my wish list. Yeah, affixes, um, they've been moving in a good direction here. I'm still, I would like to see redesigns to Afflicted and Corporeal. Okay. Those affixes are like passenger affixes where the difficulty is heavily correlated on who you're playing with rather than what you're doing, which can make it feel pretty rough, especially if you're playing one of the classes that can't do much about it. I know M Plus is a team game, and you know a lot of things are going to change based on what's in your group and who you're playing with, but those affixes in particular, I don't like how much it's... Sometimes the burden feels like it falls entirely on one person to solo it. Sometimes you're just like in a group where the person who's playing the class that can handle it isn't, and you're there looking at the incorporeals free casting or whatever. You're just like, I... I guess. This, this yeah. sucks, right? Mm -hmm. Um and then same with like afflicted. If you're a healer in a group with you know people that aren't using or don't have off dispels, uh, and you're just getting all that extra load on you, versus if they're, you're in a group with two people that have off dispels and are using them every time, right? Like that difference is night and day. And I think it's good if there are affixes that it matters what the rest of your group is doing and how they're helping you play around them. But I feel like those fall way too far on that side of the spectrum. Sure. I think I think that for me, one of one of my actual big wish list items is kind of similar to what you're talking about but i think that they need to stop making as much polarizing utility in dungeons be required um whether it be things such as mass i think mass spell and mind suit are the ones that people commonly harp on for the season but even things such as like offensive purges you know even just normal dispels even you know a, 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 i'm listing a bunch of dispels but this is also required like it, it it makes things such as Hunter and Warrior a lot harder to bring whenever Blizzard continues to design um, a lot of heavily like incentivized dispels and keys. And they, they have pushed a lot towards uh, survivability being incentivized in a lot of dungeons, which is actually kind of interesting, but it also that also kind of creates some problems as well. I think, I think in general, though, I think that the polarizing utility is something that is majorly on my wish list, though, for things that I would, I would like Blizzard to maybe look to address in 10.2 from like a dungeon design level yeah i think also like maybe shifting a little bit of the difficulty out of you know throughput and self-defensive checks on your dps right like and more on to back onto like damage checks and execution checks i i, I think this season could move a little bit I... more in that direction it'd be good I typically prefer the survivability check personally. I typically prefer the survivability checks over the damage checks because I think that having a, a, a little bit more of a lenient timer makes makes it like it allows players who only do a couple of keys a week and are like trying to push or whatever, it allows them to kind of have a bit more leeway to make mistakes in the dungeons. They're able to time the key with five deaths, they're able to time the key with seven deaths, that kind of thing. And now of course this doesn't matter whenever you're trying to do a 21 or something like that, or like a 20, like a weekly 20. But if you're pushing a key that is relevant relative to your skill level or relative to your gear, I think it also I, I think that the survivability checks are a bit easier for if you're just kind of jumping in for a couple key sessions a week. I think that that would like. I think that the balance we had before ten point one point five was pretty good on this. Yeah. But once ten point one point five came out, you and if you were playing like the God Comp, you had this, you, you had this experience of just zoning into a key and it's just like, okay, if we don't wipe, we have uh, God, we God. have this key by seven minutes or whatever. We have this key by five minutes, and and to me, those are like, I like I like it when there is risk and reward to how you play a Mythic sure. Plus dungeon, and there's incentive to find faster ways to do things huh. and. Uh, the timer is like is something that you you're caring about, not like to the exclusion of all else, but more than especially the ten point one point five key pushing was. I would actually like exponential uh, exponential title numbers uh, score exponential score to come back. Oh to. yeah, so what you're talking about is <laughs> back in the day, back when it was just Raider IO score. Yes, if you timed day twenty one, you got say 
10 points, right? Then if you timed to 22, you got 12 points. And then if you timed to 23, you got 15 points, right? And you yes. get like, you would get more points as the key level got up. Um, I like that as well. I mean, to be clear, it, it wouldn't really change anything about the, it, the title put, cutoff or anything like that. Like, it would slightly increase the value of a lopsided distribution of best keys, right? Like, if you had 428s and 425s, that you would be buffed relative to somebody who had all 27s or whatever. Uh, it also model, uh, it, it also makes it the... mostly just makes it so that if you like the effort of going from all 13s to all 14s is less points than the effort of going from all mm -hmm. 17 or all 17 to all 18s or from all 27s to all 28s and making those bigger point step ups. Uh, I, I liked it back when it used to work that way with Radar IO score. Yeah. Uh, would you change anything about key reroll system? I don't think so as like, I mean, so I, I would be down for a more open key reroll system a little bit, like rather than, I, I would be down for kind of a redesign here, but I'm not sure it should be mid expansion. I would be down for something where like timing keys gives you a currency and then that currency lets you sort of do rerolls rather than the whole sure. the current system of like end of dungeon, you get one reroll on lower keys, that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm, I don't know. I I'm not I'm not a huge hater of the current reroll system. I think it's fine. All right, let's move on to raid a little bit because I think that, that that was a lot of the mythic plus stuff. I think that unless do you have anything that's pertinent? Yeah, we can talk about like gear and rewards after raid maybe. Yeah, yeah that's, I what, think that's that's definitely something to talk about. That's kind of one thing too. Um, for raid in general, I thought that the difficulty that we've had in both Vault of the Incarnates and Avarice has been okay. Um, this is speaking more specifically towards. Mythic in particular, um, I thought that the general difficulty of Mythic was mostly fine. It was within a band that I was I, I deem as acceptable. Um, there, there is like a certain level where the raid can be too hard or too easy, and I don't think that I, I don't think that Blizzard has fallen into the too easy category in a very long time. And they, you know, the last time they fell into a, the too hard category was Sepulchre. I don't really expect that to change. Uh, what, what did you think about? I, I know a lot of people. I don't want to say a lot of people. I know. A lot of vocal race rule first players had discussion points like right after the raid about the difficulty of it. I mean, what what were your general thoughts about the raid difficulty? Um, I think it it maybe did land a little bit on the easy side of things. Um, was it too easy? I don't think it was too easy. No, I th I think it was fine. Yeah, I think that there's like the the there were some problems with specific bosses, right? Like. Magmarax's difficulty and location in the raid, I think, was problematic. Uh, Zaskarn as well. Another one where, like, those two bosses, I think, kind of entered the middle of the raid. Sure. Uh, with how they played out. Obviously, Zaskarn, not too easy so much, but, like, it was cheesable, and then it was fixed, and that was, like, a, a whole thing. buffed. I think that Echo of Neltharion also deserves a lot of criticism, too, because that... That boss was not especially difficult, but the difficulty that it had was really obnoxious. Was the volcanic heart, you know, weak aura solving uh, check? Yeah. No. So, the like three of the last four bosses, I think, did bad things, and it, it kind of especially, and they tended towards low pull counts as well. But I don't think it was like a too easy side of things there. And then Sarkarath, I don't think was a problem. Sarkarath, I think, was a, a good fight uh on the shorter end in terms of combat time which also reduces pull count but yeah i don't think it was like prohibitively easy or anything now i will say that i think heroic uh this landed in the bout where i like heroic to be generally i think the the past all of shadowlands and vault of the incarnates i thought heroic landed on too hard just generally i thought that they they made the last boss of heroic uh, required nerfs uh, or required multiple weeks of gear to be able to finally actually down that. Um, in some instances, the last boss wasn't incentivized like Jailer, but even still, it was like pretty challenging. I think that a Heroic just as a whole has been too hard for a while, and I thought the Avarice, uh, they hit my sweet spot personally. Like In, in my wish list, I, I wish that they would continue to go with this difficulty level for Heroic. Yeah, it depends. Like, it depends on what sort of thing you want to get out of Heroic, right? Like, if yeah. you want to be able to split it week one without too much pain, this was a good difficulty point. Um, on the other hand, you know, we often hear about how people want, like, harder 10-player content to come back uh, or those sorts of things, right? Like, flexible rating size. And if there's not any challenging or interesting Heroic bosses in a tier, um, there's obviously, like, less 
content for that sort of guild to do right versus uh -huh. like like heroic razageth was legitimately a pretty tricky encounter that uh, it was harder than like most of the early mythic bosses that tier that meant that there was like something to potentially progress for a guild like that and i don't uh think this tier had one of those for quite as many uh like for for guilds that were as good as as say had some trouble with uh with raz i think like you can look at like anduin and sylvanas week one as probably way too hard yeah um, th those were like <laughs> the the fourth hardest boss you fought that tier or something like that right yeah Sil Silv week one as well you had to like cheese raid size and i think that's a good example of why we don't want flex rating mythic is uh yeah Silv week one is like oh you play with 19 um, people you got the right number of these mechanics but yeah and anything with actual raid size with a part of your wish list would you actually if, if you were designing the game would you want to change raid size at all no, I don't, I don't. I'm still a fan of uh, okay. of current stuff there, and I think the heroic. Yeah, I, like I think I think the heroic raid could be a little bit harder than this tier was, but somewhere around yeah. here, between here and vaults, probably good. For me, it's like uh, with raid size stuff. I think if I was designing the game today, I would have not gone with twenty being the ideal number of players. Uh, but with the, with the way the current ra game is designed, with how raid buffs are, with how classes are. Um, and the fact that 20 man has been the staple for probably like seven years at this point, eight years, maybe even at this point, I don't think that that's something that needs a necessary change. Um, any, any final raid things, private auras, uh, me any mechanical changes, anything, any mechanics that you actually want to see brought back that you're like, Oh my God, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Private auras has got to, got to be used differently than it was this tier. It, it's not like a, a, a way to make a mechanic not be solved with some sort of like pre-planned systematic yeah often assisted by weak auras approach it'll just make solving mechanics that way more annoying but if they need to be solved that way they still oh. will as volcanic heart proved um dude but i do think it's reasonable tech for them to deploy on some types of mechanics mechanics that are like reasonably yoloable which volcanic yeah. heart is not that's the problem with with it but mechanics that are reasonably yoloable that you don't want there to be an easy weak aura solution to I want a really good for raid next year. I want a really good patchwork fight. Yeah, I'm down for one of those. I Been think a, I guess Rashok was pretty good, but yeah. Okay, I want like pretty a really good late uh, patchwork fight. Yeah, that's fight. the problem. Yeah, I want a really good late patchwork fight. I, I like, but some of my favorite bosses of all time have just been patchwork bosses. Not necessarily because of uh, like the mechanics that they provide, because typically, like with the patchwork fight, they're the mechanics are typically like pretty non like nondescript or like not that big of a deal but i think that like the the high that you get once everything kind of clicks together nobody dies and you have that perfect pull in terms of damage the that feeling of adrenaline is is pretty good for me i like that one yeah i think that's a, um, a good call okay let's talk about gearing wishlist stuff you you want to go first i actually have something you can go yeah yeah i want the great vault to be changed now I okay. haven't I haven't thought about it too much in regards to what exactly I want to be different about the Great Vault, but I feel like the Great Vault as it currently stands is not in a state where um, it, it feels very clunky with how it fits into the game currently, uh, where you gear out a lot of your uh, gear through just either farming Mythic Plus or you you obtain it via raid. You upgrade it with the current um, gear upgrade solutions, which I think are pretty good. And then the Vault is in this weird limbo state where it. It uh, doesn't feel like it has a lot of use. I do think the vault maybe could be turned into something that allows you for better deterministic options on gaining gear, either particularly from Raid or um, from Mythic Plus. I think, I think that that is something that the game is currently lacking, where the vault could kind of fill that niche. I do think the vault has some good elements to it, like uh, allowing you to gain sockets if you don't have an upgrade. I think that that's great. Allowing you to have half a spark also if you don't get an upgrade. I think that's pretty good um from professions i think that professions just as a general system have been interesting enough to where the half spark from the vault is okay but i think the vault in itself especially like the options that you're gaining from the vault you're hoping for like three options in a sea of a hundred and you're like that that kind of feels weird yeah i think the vault does well in terms of like it's fun it's a fun weekly you know it's fun week one and week hit, two right right uh yeah, one problem is if you if you have like like this patch, you're never going to see an upgrade to your gloves in the vault once you've got, you know, 447 crafted gloves, right? Like yeah. I guess 
if you're killing Sarkarath or whatever, you've got Sarkarath loot in your vault. But for the most part, the Mythic Plus vault slots and Mythic Raid vault slots and Heroic Raid vault slots are going to be inferior to your crafted gear and to uh like which you'll have on much of your character a few weeks in so yeah most most items you can see in your vault wouldn't be an upgrade and you're kind of spinning a pretty small wheel of like the few remaining slots you have upgrades for or uh tertiaries or trinkets if you're on like a really geared character yeah i'm not sure that's a problem though because like i don't know if you're a really geared character you're really geared right like i do think that gearing's faster you're you're more geared you know there's not much more gear for you to need. I don't think that I don't think that the vault necessarily needs to accelerate your gear anymore. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I don't think it needs to um, increase the tempo at which you're getting gear, but I do think it could do something where it's like it allows you to be able to get get specific chase items. Um, yeah, and these aren't like I, I guess legendaries. That could be done these are vault. like. I, like you're talking about like uh, ominous chromatic essence type yeah. items, right? Say, where it's say, like, say you don't have an item and you want it. Yeah, I I do think that targeting certain trinkets uh especially like a dinars type system would be really welcome even if it had to wait until the 0.5 patch i think that would be really big for mm -hmm. uh future patches and, yeah that that would be really nice and i think with how they changed the gear upgrade system i think the the vault could be that bridge because the vault has felt weird this expansion just in general i, I thought the, the vault felt weird last patch to me especially with how crafted gear works and it's continued to feel even more weird this patch yeah, I mean, the upgrades are smaller if you're already a pretty geared character, yeah, but I don't know, I mean, like, if you're, the less geared you are, the better vault is, the vault as a system is, right? Sure. Most people are a lot less geared early in the patch than you and I. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Um, what, what do you got gearing-wise that uh, are on some of your wish lists? How do you feel about, like, the, the item level upgrade system? We can talk about, like, class sets. What yeah, I mean, I hope we keep all of the, all or almost all of the gearing upgrade system here. I... Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if Blizzard wanted to nerf the speed at which super sweaty players geared. <laughs> like um, you and I. <laughs> like you and I. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully they find a way to do that that doesn't nerf normal, more casual players too much. Sure. Um, I think there are ways to do this. I think there are ways you can target like the early aspect crests in the first few weeks and uh and the worms crest in the first few weeks and uh lower the like weekly amount of those those sorts of currencies that you can earn in the first few weeks and uh that way you and i are not like hitting full build on the second week but maybe the fourth week of the patch um but i do think it's it was a great system and i'm i really hope they don't nerf the quality of life that came with it there's so much good quality of life there with the like free upgrades when you have a higher animal yeah. piece already that is something that has just been such a a it's so awesome that they've implemented the system with the quality of life already there yes rather than us it's having very to, good like uh, there i imagine previous systems like this where it's like you and i are making videos for months where we're talking about how we want that to be there before do you remember the cloak in. do you remember the yeah like the, cloak the... catch up where you were just forever behind if you didn't have your uh stupid cloak Dude, thing for yeah i remember i made a video about like should you start playing world of warcraft right now and i like hammered the cloak not having cloak catch up and the answer was like no and i was like well, this is so stupid that we don't have cloak catch yeah up. well because it was like june and it was like if you kill Nazoth and do a horrific vision every week for the rest of like for the forever, you will catch up in October. It's just like what? When, when is the expansion know? coming out? I don't know September or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, yeah. what are we doing here, right? Yeah, so, yeah I, I I agree. I think that it, this the system is great. Um, and I hope that it survives mostly unscathed into the uh, into the next time. And I hope if they decide to nerf it, they target some nice not too nasty ways that mostly hit players like you and me and not people playing more casually. They can actually hit a QOL um, on the crafting system in general, and I think actually improve this a little bit. So this actually can get better. I find that starting alts pretty late, um, specifically with how the system works with, you know, not only just crafting gear, but upgrading gear in general. Um, I find it kind of challenging to get enough aspect crests or worms crests or whatever to be able to upgrade all of my gear in like a reasonably time and like a timely manner without having to go and do just a jillion mythic plus runs and i think that's something they could do is like as the cap is increased it also increases the amount that you get dropped either on a per boss or like a per dungeon basis and it doesn't even have to be by a lot it can just be by like 
you know, maybe one per week or something like that. And that allows you, like, as the patch progresses, that allows, like, your alts or characters that start late or maybe you take a break for a little bit, it allows you to jump back in and then um, get get to that point where your gear is good as opposed to having to do, what are 40 dungeons to be able to get to the crafted point that you want to be at. I like that, yeah. I think that, in fact, I think that even from the start of the patch, they could make depletes more generous as well. Like, five for a deplete feels really harsh. Um, sure. So I think I think that would be another thing I would I'd like to see buffed along with whatever nerfs they I, they I, would want to deliver. I, I know there's a lot of people that want just crest to be account wide, and I don't think they're likely to do that. Because, I actually don't uh, want that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, they're they've talked about this sort of thing in the past where they never really want the best way to gear your your new mage alt to be to play your warrior main, right? Like they they don't want that to be true. Um, and that would be basically the incentive that was would be created if they made them fully account wide. But it's definitely true that if you make a new alt now, it does seem like a very long grind of crests. And it's it's the salt in the wound is that you have so many spare crests you can't use on your main. So I I think that just yeah like if if this point in the patch you were getting twenty five aspect crests for a key instead of twelve that would be a uh, but I don't think you should be getting, go a really like, long way clearly I don't think you should be getting twenty five on week one but I think if you if it yeah. just increases one per week it's like yeah, that's where we'd be at right yeah, yeah it's gradual over time and then it allows you know characters that start lead. yeah like I would I be I don't have a problem with a uh, with an alt getting twenty five right now but I would have a problem with somebody getting twenty five on week one yeah the the yeah. the we want the start of the patch gearing to be a little slower and the late patch gearing to be a little faster right? I don't like even know if it the... necessarily needs to be a, yeah that's fine it doesn't matter um, yeah profession system I actually thought they part of our ten uh, one wish list was make more new and interesting more embellishments, embellishments. Yeah. yeah and I thought that they they hit it I think that embellishments just as a general concept. They're not the most interesting thing, but I think that they're they're designed. I think this is as as good as it's going to get, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think they're designed. Is, for uh, it's been okay. Like there's spore cloak that some people are using, but not everybody. Yeah. There's elemental lariat that you use at the end of the patch, but not the start of the patch. You know, there's uh there is more gameplay there than there was last patch. I would say with with choosing what embellishment to use. The fact that sparks are so plentiful as well means that you can just build whatever embellishment sets you might want and try them all out, which I think is cool. Um, so yeah, I... I think that's mission probably mostly accomplished there. Obviously, like I'd love to see more interesting situational embellishments, maybe another, like a, a more defensive option for tanks specifically, not the Spore Cloak, which is more of a healer DPS defensive option uh, would be nifty. But overall, I think it's uh, it's good. I will say the only the only real complaint that I have about the profession system is the cost so I don't, yeah. I don't normally run into issues with the cost itself because I'm in a guild that, you know, we subsidize all of that stuff. But I have some, like, you know, more casual friends or friends that aren't playing with or, or don't have a guild that's fully paying for their stuff or they don't, they aren't made of money and, like, you know, uh, they're just playing the game. They're just doing Mythic Plus. And it's quite costly to craft a lot of gear, especially since a lot of your gear that you wear is crafted. Um, I think that that... Blizzard succeeded with what they were trying to do with the profession system to make it relevant, a relevant in-game gearing solution. I think that that was a success on their end. I think that the cost that it uh, incurs to players generally is a bit high. I wonder if there's a way to maybe bring that down a bit. Yeah, it's definitely a case of like, if, if in Shadowlands you were a player that didn't want to engage with professions and just wanted good gear... You would kind of get a little scammed for your for your first legendary piece if you bought it early in a patch or whatever. But otherwise, the the costs weren't too low, and especially late in the patch, they were or they weren't too high, and they especially late in the patch, they weren't too high. Yeah. This time around, like if you're somebody who doesn't want to do any profession stuff, you're paying a lot for all of these things, and like you don't if you don't have an understanding of how the different systems work and like what sort of things you need to get a good crafter for versus what sort of things you can. Uh, kind of have done whatever with, without quality being a concern. Um, yeah, you'll get kind of owned. On the flip side, if you look into and like learn the profession system, there's money to be made there. And if you look into a new patch and you're like, oh, here's this Dracothist material that's used for all these enchanted crests, right? I'm gonna get all my al I'm gonna get my alchemy up and yeah, get those things. Like there was a lot of there's a lot of profit to be made this patch from doing that. So I don't know. I I do think it's a case of like yeah, if you want like the profession system is powerful. You can make gold with it, or you can get good items with it, but you can't do both unless you actually I, spend some time learning how it works. I kind of wish I was wearing fewer crafted pieces too. Like I, it's such a it's such a weird spot. Like I wonder I wonder if they could put a cap on the amount of crafted pieces you could wear. 
Um, mm. Because for a lot of slots, the crafted is you're just bis because you're able to stat optimize it. Um, uh, yeah, they did buff the crafted gear this patch from... So it was already really good last patch, and last patch it was the equivalent to 444, right? It was 418. Yeah. Um, they buffed it this patch to 447, and yeah... I, I do wonder if 444 wouldn't be... Like, 444 would still be BIS for a lot of people in a lot of slots, right? But then you would have theoretical upgrades out of your vault if you could get Myth Track out of your vault and out of Mythic Raid, um, which I think, you know, that there's maybe some merit to returning to that particular item level. I mean, we're talking about three item levels here, so it's not a big deal. It just... It, yeah, it just, it just ends up feeling like you're wearing a lot of crafted pieces, which is not a bad thing, Yeah, I don't say. think that's inherently bad, but yeah. I do... It is different uh yeah. and maybe a little bit weird i mean with what blizzard's aligned goals were they were successful i just don't know if i don't know if it's necessary like i don't i don't think it's a big deal either way right? yeah like they could keep it the exact same as it was this patch and i i probably wouldn't i'm not gonna complain about it like it is what it is but i do think it's like a bit uh strange um any other gearing stuff uh, how you feel about like any, anything with tier sets you know anything with uh, tier set acquisition maybe perhaps i'd like to see tier a little bit more easy to acquire for m plus players they they buffed tier acquisition so that it was really free if you're doing at least like normal and and some heroic bosses uh to get your four piece really early in the patch and i thought that was great uh and it's definitely made it true that now if you're if you're somebody who like gets anywhere close to rage you're gonna yeah. get your set bonus really quick but that does mean now the disparity between somebody who is willing to do a little bit of raid and somebody who really, really hates raid has gotten worse, right? Like, it's you're now so far behind if you're not willing to touch the raid. And since they made the raid so rewarding this time, it's like you have to really hate raid to not go into it to get tier. I don't think those people should be as punished well, as mean, they are this patch. What do you do if you're a PvPer as well? It's not even just about Mythic Plusters. It's like anybody who's not willing to necessarily touch raid, which includes PvPers, because class sets... They're no longer there's no longer a separation between raid tier sets and and uh, PvP tier sets. They're just here. Um, acquisition is going to be challenging for PvPers. Yeah, and again, like the, it's solvable for any given player. You can always just go do and raid. do raid on that character. But like, I wish that it was not. I wish that doing raid was good, but not as good as it is right now for how mm -hmm. quick you get your tier from it. Right, like I, I wish that you could still get it within a few weeks of doing M+, plus, even if it's like, you know, maybe champion track or whatever. That's champion track until the catalyst comes out, I think would be a pretty fair way of doing that. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty fair. Um, I don't know if I have anything else in regards to like super big wish list items. Okay. Do you yeah, have anything yeah. else? I think, I think uh, the, the game has been good. The, the game is, dude, I remember the first wish list we made. It was coming off the, the Corthia patch and we hammered a long one yeah we hammered the game for a while i think on that one Dude, we had aoe cap we had uh conduit energy we had covenant covenant locking. locking yeah we had a lot of a lot of systems criticized then huh yeah now, now we're criticizing man i think the gearing system is maybe a bit too fast <laughs> yeah you know you know it's it's a good 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 problem to have good problem yeah. to have for sure i think i think my big i think my biggest thing is probably still that mythic plus like class uh class utility weird thing but I, I i don't even know if that comes down to dungeon design i think it comes down to almost like class design whenever they were creating talent systems yeah uh another like difficult kind of maybe bigger than the scope of a patch note change oh the, yeah that i guess raid buffs I, I guess that would be my only big yes. system-wide uh wish list item Is, and so the and so he says he agrees with it but he, he already knows my opinion on it. it's like raid buffs are too impactful as it currently stands, um, it, it specifically for like mythic raiders, the the fact that you have to instead of recruiting like the best uh, suitable players, you're instead recruiting the player that's playing this class, or you're having somebody reroll to this class whenever a previous person who played that class leaves your guild or whatever, is a really weird dynamic, and it also ends up uh, pushing a couple of classes out of the meta, particularly like you know hunter and death knight and sh some of the shaman specs that don't have a raid buff i think that that is like pretty problematic for uh the raid scene and just the raid game in general i think that uh i think that something could probably happen with raid buffs to make them you know less polarizing yeah i agree there yeah Four 14 slots or was it 13 slots being locked in out of 20 is stupid 
Especially then when you've got four augmentation evokers taking up another four <laughs> slots, which okay, uh, so we've got 17 slots. that'll be, a, I'm sure, a topic for future videos, depending on how that balance ends up working out. Once we get some raid testing as well, and we can kind of see if that yeah, ends up being the the way, which I think it will. Yeah, uh, uh, front, front page of Wowhead a couple days ago, it was like four aug evokers killing... Uh, yeah, mythic assault in 30 seconds. Yeah, assault. Like, I didn't even see that. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, anyways, yeah. alright, we're out of here. We'll be back next week to talk about... Something! Something, yeah, please please leave some comments and suggestions down below. We will... We're really... We're really <laughs> we're maybe drive for content right now, but we'll be back next week. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Right,